know it, you'll turn around and that photo album that has your wedding pictures and all the wonderful things that has dust selling on it will just be a memory of a, another couple in another time. It won't take your home. It'll just make you take that for granted. He won't come and steal your children from you. Familiarity won't come in and take your children. He'll come in and he'll make you take your children for granted. You'll get too busy to notice them. Sometimes you can get too busy doing the Lord's work to spend time with the piece of work that the Lord has made. <laughs> That was a hard pill for me to swallow because so many times I will say, not now, Dad, because I've got to get this sermon done. Not now, Dad, I've got to get this done. Not now. I've got to do this. But since I'm doing it for the Lord, it makes it easy for me to think it's all right. You see, next summer, let me know next year and I'll coach the soccer team. I'll coach the little league team next year. Get with me next year. Anybody starting to know what I'm talking about? Next month. Next month we'll go to the lake and spend the weekend. Next week we'll sit down and I will teach you what it means to pray. The age of familiarity, the, the, that secret agent. He loves to get you to procrastinate and put it off. And you'll turn around one day and books will go unread. Games will go unplayed. Sitting together and just holding your children in the recliner and watching a good old cartoon. Something that doesn't have all the language and violence and sex that we seem to like to watch. It'll be gone. They'll be older and they'll have things that they want to do. Friends that they want to go see. They'll start families of their own. And you'll look back and you will say, where did the years go? I had so many opportunities. And I thought they would always be young. I thought they would be there forever. And I didn't have time for them. And now they don't have time for me. All of a sudden, that little, that little face that dropped you to your knees and brought tears to your eyes in the delivery room will just be common. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about being so familiar with something that you say, I've done it a thousand times. I don't need to wear gloves. I've done this a thousand times. I don't need to put the harness on. I've done it a thousand times. I don't need to turn the electricity off. I've done it a thousand times. You see it in the workplace all the time. You get so used to doing something that you no longer think about it, you no longer accept it as being something you need to pay attention to. And that's where the problems start to happen. Every Sunday we sing the doxology. We recite the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed. And it just becomes something we do. Worship just becomes something that we go to and we do. And when we read the scripture, we don't read it. We just go through it and we don't really ask ourselves, what is it saying to me? What is it saying to me? They're not out there just for something to fill up a service. It has meaning. It doesn't need to be something that is familiar. Familiarity is very comfortable. And it's so easy to get caught up in it. You're going 
to the motion. But then the medical report. You have walked one day and the divorce papers show up. Or it's 20 minutes after 12 and your teenage child is 20 minutes late from curfew and you're thinking to yourself, now it matters to me. And when they get home, I'm going to give them a blessing out. They're going to be on restriction. And there's a knock at the door, but it's not your children. You open the door and it's a police officer. And now that noose, that little bit of a hanging tightens and the stool falls and you start to kick. But there's no ground to grab hold of. Because everything that was there throughout your life have become so familiar that it was common. And now it has been taken away from you. There's a song that I used to like a few years ago. Part of it is a Ty Herndon song. And one of the, the chorus lines says, her eyes were blue, her hair was long, in 64, she was born in Baton Rouge. Her favorite song was in my life. I memorized her every move. I knew her books, her car, her clothes, but I paid no attention to what mattered most. Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he said, you know the laws, you know the the Old Testament backwards and forwards. You know all the procedures, but you're not paying attention to what matters most. Because what matters most is not this. What matters most is here. What matters most is love and the things that are dear to me. Has anybody here ever experienced just a little bit of a hanging that made you realize this is what is important to me? Anybody know what I'm coming, where I'm coming from? Amen. That noose doesn't feel well. The, the agent of familiarity. I was at a funeral service yesterday. And it dawned on me as I was listening to the pastor at the graveside with the committal that dawned on me. When you get here, it's too late. When you get here, it's too late. You see, you have to realize that what God has given you, the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross, the sacrifice of the Lamb, it only matters while you're breathing because once you're gone and you're standing in front, that judgment seat is too late. You can't say, Lord, I'll do it now. I took it for granted. I took your love for granted. I took what you gave me for granted. I took it all for granted, but now I realize, and Lord, I'm willing to do better. It doesn't work that way. We get a chance. We get one. And we can't take for granted the love that Jesus Christ poured out for us on that cross. Amen. That's what I realized at that funeral service is right here is where you have to decide. Because the next time you're back here, if you're there for a funeral, and if the next time you come back, instead of walking in, they're carrying you in, it's too late. <clears throat> Therefore, be careful how you walk. Not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time. The scripture says, do not take one second for granted. If I have to come up here in the pulpit and I have to say, I am sorry, I'm not as prepared as I should be, but I just needed to spend some time with my family this week, I think that God will say, that's okay. That is something that I have to look at every day. Like I said, it's easy. To think if you're doing God's work, that it's all right to ignore the people you love. It's not. A 
little hand. I think it could probably do us all a little good. You know, in that story, Max Cicada told about Gina, his daughter, and y'all can be turning to page 33 in your United Methodist hymnal if you want. In that story that Max Cicado told about his daughter, it made me realize that a lot of times that little bit of a hanging that we experience in life, it usually comes from a child. Gina taught him what it was like, a two-year-old child. <clears throat> that child in the manger taught us what it was like. And this morning, a young lady will teach us what it's like to not take for granted the opportunity to tell the world, I love Jesus, and I want everybody in the world to know. A lot of y'all have experienced the type of service we're going to have. And you might be flipping it and say, yeah, Lord be with you and also with you. And you know those words by heart. Don't. When you read them, think about them. Don't let them be familiar to where it doesn't carry any more power. Because the young lady that's fixing to stand before us knows that there's power in these words because we've already read over it and talked about it. She understands. 